You're listening to The Blind Stealing the Blinds, a podcast by students of the game for students of the game. Join Dell and BJ for conversations about poker theory and bridging the gap between theory and application. We're all in this together, so let's get to it. This week's topic, ego and its role in poker. Hey Dell, how you doing this week? I'm doing fantastic. Um, my job actually lied to me. Like, remember I told you I was going down to Pilgrim and it was uh, like a short three week job. Yeah. Turned into a, a, a five year job. Okay. Apparently the uh, they they don't want carpenters there, so they're refusing to sign a contract with the carpenters union, and uh, they were leading me to believe that they would, so that uh, they could get me in there to build this scaffold. So that sounds like an awful thing. It really does, but it's not. It, it just in it just um, let's just say it gives me more uh, drive and ambition to uh, work on finding other ways to make a living. You know, it's something that I, it's come to an end. It's not some like I still always have that in my back pocket, but I'm looking forward to moving on to new adventures in my life and learning other ways to support myself and my wife and, uh, you know, my endeavors. How about okay. yourself, DJ? How's your life going? My life's been going pretty well, Dell. I dropped down to 1-3 this weekend, deciding not to play in the more cognitively demanding 2-5 game, just because I've had so much stuff going on. I closed in the condo last week, so now we're getting that in ready to rent out. May already have a tenant lined up, so that's great. I'm trying to put out fires at work, which is kind of my job. My wife says I'm a professional meeting attender and dumpster fire putter outer. She's not wrong. And we've been getting the podcast ready, trying to improve how we do this. This is our third time around, so I'm still learning audio editing and all that good stuff. But this is a good way to round out the week, and it's good to have a conversation with you. So We want to talk about ego this week. And I'm probably going to say something controversial. A lot of people think ego is a bad thing at poker. I don't necessarily think so. It could become a bad thing, but like many social phenomena, I think it's both good and bad, depending how you want to do it. So I think what we want to do this episode is talk about the pros and cons of having an ego, talk about when that can be a problem on the felt, of course, that translates to problems off the felt, as we talked about, you know, poker makes us better people, and then use those steps to try to figure out how we can better leverage ego to either grow our stacks or at least prevent them from dwindling. So how's that sound? It, it, it sounds great, but it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> the, the beauty okay, of this, tell me why. <laughs> the beauty of this is that uh, my wife is a clinical therapist. And I've had a few conversations with her about ego, because as you recall, I I wasn't really thrilled about this for a topic. But the more I talked with her, the more I really fell in love with this topic. So I'm going to come at this a little differently than you. And so I shouldn't say that's not going to happen. It's going to happen, but we're going to have very differing viewpoints. And mine is probably going to be strongly biased by the fact that my wife is a clinical therapist you know so strongly biased in the direction of a professional social scientist i don't have a problem with this <laughs> yeah so you know i i think this is a great topic and i and i will also say that you know before having a conversation with my wife i would have argued that there's a difference between um you know what what when you're talking about you need some ego at the table, I would have said, no, no, that's confident. I would have been wrong. You know, that's why it's good to, you know, have um, differing opinions in your life and be open to them because I would have been wrong because it's, there is a positive ego. There is positive ego. Um, So I think that we need to understand exactly how ego works and, and, Find a way to manipulate our ego to the positive. Agreed. And I'm hoping that maybe I can share my experience of where I see my ego being a positive and a negative, and then you can throw some science bombs my way to say, well, you know, this is really what the clinical literature says about this stuff. And I'm not an expert, so your wife is. 
I'm glad to have that. That's fantastic. Like one thing you just mentioned is you know, a healthy sense of ego can be self-confidence. And for the most part, we are all heroes in our own story. And so my thing is the larger your ego, potentially the larger your self-esteem. And that breeds our self-confidence and drives us to success and being optimistic. Now, here's where that is a pro in my life. I think it gives me faith in myself to pull the trigger on, let's say, a triple barrel bluff when I know it's the right thing to do, but I have to dig deep, you know, really find the intestinal fortitude to pull that trigger. Example, I did just this weekend, you know, I open raised and a couple people called me. The flop comes, I check, I got two pair, I check, hoping to check raise. And one guy bet, the other guy called, and I had a split second of doubt. And I'm concerned, what is that second guy calling with? But I already had the plan formulated that I was going to check raise. So even though the first guy bet out like 50, the other guy called, I raised to 175 and they both snap folded. If I hadn't dug deep, I would have easily lost that pot. Um, now the con to that is overconfidence. And this, I think, leads people to the entitlement tilt we had talked about last episode, especially when you know you are better than the other players. You forego logic and you go for the jugular. And this is exactly what I do when I'm not thinking and I default to my hyper-aggressive, I'm going to beat the pulp out of people and take pots down just through blind aggression. Now, what would your wife say to the science of that? Well, I, I actually want to, what would she say to the science of that? I, I would say that, first of all, the big thing that she brought up was the uh, functional ego state model. You know, um, in, in that, that breaks the ego down into three parts. Um, you know, the parent ego, which is going to be, you know, it has two parts, the critical and the nurturing. And uh, the critical is the part that, you know, sets the rules in, 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 and regulations, and it's not necessarily a negative thing, but we tend to, you know, we hear the word critical, we think of it that way. And it has a nurturing part of the ego. And we have the adult ego, which is the part of your ego that that is making the planning and the decisions of, uh, the best way to for me to think of it is it's, it's the now. It's the part of you that is in this present moment. You know, when, when you know, when you're there, and uh, then you have the child part. And I would say that, you know, when we're looking at what you just said, I would look at it and say that moment of doubt, that moment of doubt, that, that's that child part that, you know, is in, it's questioning. It's that child part of your ego. And you get to take and have that parental nurturing part that says, no, no, we had a plan and it was a good plan and we're going to follow through and everything's going to be all right, you know, and that, that you know, the thing that happens is that we tend to just always think of ego is one thing and it's always a negative thing. You know what I mean? But there's a positive part of your ego that, that was there. That was that parenting part of your ego that said, no, oh, no, it's all right. You know, and it, and it nurtured your child part of your ego. The problem that most of us have is we don't have the uh, wherewithal to do that consciously. You know, it's, it's that moment where we can process beyond um, a lack of awareness you know we can start to say I know this is how this works and I'm going to activate this part of my ego for this okay so how do we get beyond that how do we get to the point where we are checking ourselves before we wreck ourselves in the infinite wisdom of the 90s right so I, I you know I don't have all the answers to that, but I'm going to take and use you. I'm going to use you as an example, my friend. Oh, because... everyone help us. Dear God, help us. Because <laughs> I remember that it wasn't that long ago that you were calling an awful lot of three bets and four bets out of position. Yep. And you had this uh, childish thing that was going on. You had this child trauma that was involved in it. Oh, we're going to dig deep on this podcast, episode three, and we're already psychoanalyzing. 
Well, I think this is important. And actually, I'll ask you, do I, do I have your permission? To... Oh, yeah. No, this is good stuff. All right. This so good stuff. you had like this child trauma that was a part of your ego. That was the child part of your ego that was like, you're not going to bully me off this hand. You're not going to push me off this hand. Damn it. I bet this hand and it's you. You're not getting away with it. What was lacking in that moment? Like I gave you this thing where I said, if you take in, in you know, call out a position when you know you're not supposed to, you're not, you're not teaching the bully a lesson. The bully gets to win because they get to win more of your money. You know what I mean? And we went through this process where in, through talking about it, it's like, okay, the only way you really teach the bully a lesson is to take their stack. And you can't take their stack if you're making bad poker decisions, right? Now, today, I'd look at it differently. And it would be the same result that I would say to you, you need to activate the nurturing part of your ego that tells that child part that says, you're not going to bully me to say, no, no, it's all right. We're going to take care of it. We have a plan. You're going to be okay. Your needs are going to be met. You don't need to call, make this bad poker decision. So I think right there gets to the actionable guidance that we want to give the listeners. A lot of people say you need to put in a lot of off-table work so that your on-table performance is at its best. Part of that off-table work, sure, is understanding pod odds and the math and combinatorics and board textures. But a lot of it is the mental game and the emotional resilience you bring to the table to know you have a plan. Don't let them push you around. Don't let them push your buttons and make you make bad decisions because you have a plan for how to make the best decisions. And if you let them get at you, there you go. I think that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, what you just described would be that adult part, that adult part that's in the present right now. We're going to take and do the plan. We're making the planning. We're doing the decisions. That's that adult part. You know what I mean? And, and it's a matter of activating the right part of your ego at the right time. For me, all right, because one of the things that's frustrating to me is I was able to help you with your poker problem. And I love doing that, but I couldn't help myself. I was doing something very similar and I couldn't get out of it. And one of the problems is, <laughs> one of the problems is I didn't truly understand. I didn't understand that there needed to be a part of myself that could nurture that child in me that, that had those events that insist on nobody's going to freaking bully me. I'll, I'll, I'll call you right down to the river I, and lose money, you know? So it's beyond poker, you know, and, there's two things I want to say real quick. I want to say them real quick. Like first part is this, like one, I do not, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a clinical therapist. I just happen to be married to one. So I don't want this to come off. So like if you're listening to this and you know more about that, by all means, share it with us. You know what I mean? Everything I'm saying now, I ran by my wife, who is the expert on it, <laughs> you know, before we came on this. So I don't want to go and step out of bounds. So that's the first thing. Don't treat me like I'm the expert. You know, but go in and investigate this. And the second thing is that when BJ and I decided to start this podcast, we understood that we look at poker is as we get better at poker, we get better at life. And as we get better at life, we get better at poker. We think the two are interconnected. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why I fell in love with this topic. The more I talked to my wife about it this week is if I had looked at it as I need to activate that parental part of my ego that can nurture that child. So that the adult part of my ego can take over and say, it's not a good point to call here. It's not a point where I want to raise. I don't need to get into an ego battle. I just need to do the next best decision. So let me toss another scenario your way to see how this pans out with the psychological training your wife has. Another area of my poker and non-poker life that I thought ego had a part to play was in taking action. And not being afraid. I see a lot of analysis paralysis, both in work, in social life, and definitely on the poker table. And everyone knows action is the greatest teacher. One of the benefits of having a, a healthy ego is being able to take the right action and get yourself out of analysis paralysis. For example, the real estate thing that we talked about recently. I decided to get into rental properties in August of last year. It's not even a full year and I have two properties. I know several people that still don't have their first deal. They have the best of intentions, but they're just racked with fear. 
and they don't want to take that step. Now, the con, I think, kind of goes back to being fearlessness and just leading to incredibly poor decisions like bluffing or trying to put someone off a hand. If I'm trying to either push a non-thinking player off a hand or bluff a thinking player, that will likely result in me losing money if I do it poorly just out of sheer, I'm not afraid. I'm going to do this. It's almost like I don't care. That almost sounds like the child part of me again, from what you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it that adult part? What was the third part? You mentioned there's adult, there's child, and what was the third part of the ego? Parental. 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 And when you look at the, the child, the child breaks down into three of them. You know, it breaks into the free. That would be your artistic imagination part of your child. And, and you have the rebel part of your child which is what you're talking about there. That's the rebel part of your child that, you know, the you, you've gotten the good advice from the parents or in this case, the coaches, and you've decided to disregard it. You know, if you do that, it's going to be dangerous. You, you need to be careful, you know, and, and that would be that, right. That would be that critical part of the parental part of the ego, you know, but you disregard it, you know, and I actually have that problem. That's, that's a lot of, huge problem in my life, <laughs> not necessarily at the poker table, you know? So I think that, you know, I don't want to go like, the thing is I'm not qualified to go down the rabbit hole on all these, you know what I mean? But I think that what I would like to have from this is I would love if the people who listen to this, that, that say that resonates with me, I'd like them to take and make a point to delve into it. I know I am, I'm going to make a point to delve into it. Um, because I'm like, I look at the things that are, are different between you and I in the poker world, right? And, um, you know, you're much more successful at poker. You're a better player than me. And it's not because you study harder. You know what I mean? So how does that happen? Well, a lot of it is that my ego gets in the way. My ego gets in the way. You know, sometimes it's hard for me to take advice from certain people because, you know, they annoy me and my ego won't let it happen. And sometimes I get involved in a game and um, I'm convinced that I'm smarter and I'm convinced I'm a better poker player. But it, it was funny because earlier on you said, you know, especially if I know I'm a better poker player. And the first thought that happened in my head is, well, how do you know you're a better poker player than me? You know what I mean? You, you haven't played them long enough to have an example, a sample side. Yeah, I won't ask that question of myself. My ego won't allow that. You know, how dare you question whether I'm not, I'm better than him. Of course, I'm better than him. I'm Del Hamilton. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So, you know, I, you know, it's one of those things that you, we're not going to, we're not going to be able to take and go down all the psychological rabbit holes of ego here. You know, what needs to happen to anybody who listens to this and resonates with this is they need to take that trip down. And they might want to take and they might want to take and do that with a therapist, you know, uh, or a sports psychologist or whatever they, you know, want to. Or at the very least, do some reading, <laughs> you know, do some reading about it. So you, we both have that child part of us, that rebel part of us, you and I do that, you know, gets in our way. Yeah, yeah. I think there's one thing I'm definitely going to start doing, and I would encourage anyone else to do this. Pay attention to your next three or four sessions. And if you, like I typically do an after session report where I give myself a grade on how well I made decisions, not necessarily the results, because as we mentioned, results are not necessarily tied to your decision making process. But what I want to do is for the next three or four sessions, Make a note of how many times ego influenced my decision-making process, either for good or for ill, like the nurturing part. How successful was I at sticking to a plan under pressure, even though I might have had doubts that doing this would be effective because I'm studied and I know this ought to work, pull that trigger when it makes sense. Or conversely, how many times did I just go into rebel mode and play my F poker. Okay, for reference, there's ABC poker, which is your basic studied poker. It's kind of boring. You know, it's not necessarily tight is right, but it's close. You know, your ABC poker. 
Then there is D poker, which is your deviation poker. Based on game dynamics and different player profiles where you deviate from your standard play to try to adjust in game. Then there's E, which is exploitative, and then there's F, just F it. That's what I play. When, I, when my ego gets the better of me and I let that child part of me take hold of my chips, it's just uh, F it. I, um, yeah, I agree. I, I play the same, except I play far too much F it. <laughs> we have a process and I want to make sure we follow it. We've always said that, you know, we said that we're going to take and bring up the issue and the issue here was ego. And then we're going to take and, and talk about solutions, right? And we've done that. So the last thing is, is tools. You know, and I think I've mentioned a couple and, and um, do you have any tools you'd like to mention? And I want to mention a couple before we close. The only tool that I will end up using is my session report feature in my poker app. So as I track my after session reports, I'm going to kind of do it's not quite journaling, but what I just mentioned, I'm going to evaluate my game and see how well I did relative to ego playing a part in it. Mm hmm. Right. So are you in a process that yourself or with somebody? Oh, I should probably do it with somebody. That would make sense. Because we're not, we're not very good at being subjective with our, our own ego. You know what I mean? So uh, I, that's what I do. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I do session reports and talk them out with my wife. And she doesn't play poker, but it's still extremely helpful. And I think there's material out there you can read. Um, and everybody likes to talk about the book, Ego is the Enemy. Um, we all, we just said that ego is not necessarily a bad thing, but there's a lot of good material in there and, and it's worth a read. And any study on ego, I think can be helpful to, uh, a poker player. Well, I think we did a pretty good treatise on that subject, Dell. I really appreciate the fact that you are married to a clinical psychologist and could help us with this today. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm, I'm grateful for her. Um, you know, she's uh, definitely married down and I've definitely married up. So it's, it's great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. And until next week, this is The Blind Stealing the Blinds. I want to call, I want to call, I want to call. Slow down, slow down. It's okay. You got this. You don't need to be bullied. Just follow the plan. I want to call. But do you want to lose your chips? Let's think no. about this. Nobody's bullying this. me. Stick to the plan. It'll be okay.